It's good to speak with you today, Holger, and looking forward to hearing your views of today on change management and supply chains. Can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Yeah, hi, Dustin. Thanks for having me today. I'm an international facilitator of change. That means I work with large, large multinational companies, also with nonprofit organizations, uh, and I'm particularly interested in the human aspect of organizations. That means how do teams perform, uh, what leadership patterns do we need in modern organizations, and how can we engage employees in what they are doing, and how can we motivate employees, and that's basically the field I'm working in. I work globally, including Asia, Middle East, um, Europe, all over the world. Thank you. So what is change management and why is it needed in, for supply chains? Well, let me start talking a bit about uh, change management, Dustin. And I mean, the, the expression change management has been around for quite a while, for like 30 years or so, and nobody exactly knows what it means. But uh, so I can only provide you with my understanding. I think change management is about aligning people's purposes, so what's important for them, with the organization's purpose. So that means we need to understand concerns of people, I need to see what are the barriers for change, need to see what are the barriers to effective collaboration, and then gradually start to optimize such systems of, of collaboration. That's my understanding of change management, so looking at really at the human aspect of uh, complex change processes. Um, yeah, so that's that's in a nutshell what we what we understand under change management. And probably the 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 term change management is a little bit misleading because it suggests that you can manage change. I prefer to talk more about change facilitation because we are we are working in um, complex systems and complex social systems, so it's more to facilitate or to enable change rather than to manage it and to work with what's emerging in a system. And how, is there anything more you can say about how you recommend it, it, sh it should be carried out? Well, that depends on the situation. Let me talk a little bit more about um, how I see that change management fits into your topic of, of supply chains and maybe then we can get more into specifics in, in how to carry it out, okay? Great. So, um, I'm not particularly in, uh, specialized in supply chains, but for me it's always a good laughter when, when I'm with my clients or with a team and people are saying, hey, it's not our fault for what goes wrong, supply, chains, supply chain hasn't done the job uh, properly. So, so uh, it seems like supply chain serves as a perfect scapegoat for everything which is, doesn't work well. Is that something you experience also? Um, yes, I've, I've heard of that. Yeah, okay. So the challenge is that supply chain management is quite a linear approach. Uh, I would say it's an engineering approach which assumes that if we put all resources into place, um, actually we should get good results. Um, but of course the reality proves that very often this is not the case. So this is because supply chain management meets with the reality of what I call a complex social system. And what we have understood uh, in the last 20 years in change management is that let's say engineering approaches to management must fail because of the complexity of human beings and their relationships. Let's take an example. I know you are working in Asia, so let's look at a typical Chinese setting, at a typical supply chain in China. So there are so many different aspects to consider. There are aspects of authority, there are aspects of governance, there are very mixed stakeholders, including often governments, suppliers, employees, and so on. So all these stakeholders have different loyalties um, and the supply chain is not necessarily that top priority for loyalty, you know? So, so that, that makes things very complex, that makes things depending on issues like trust, on relationships, so which means that from a change management uh, aspect to supply chains, we would look into issues of collaboration and trust we would have to look into the motivation of people. So what motivates people to collaborate in the supply chain? Which means that you don't need to only manage the supply chain alone, you need to manage relationships. That's basically change management. So 
what, I, what I'm saying is <clears throat> what we can offer as change facilitators to, to supply chain management is first of all look into patterns of collaboration. How do people work together and what are the barriers and the blocks to, to collaboration. Obviously we need totally new leadership practices, particularly when we're talking about matrix organizations, uh, when we talk about virtual teams. We need leadership patterns that go from control and command towards um, increasing alignment, uh, increasing engagement, and particularly building trust between stakeholders. And I think this trust issue is one of the hottest issues in, in change management nowadays. How do we really increase trust? And particularly, how do we increase trust when, when we're talking about virtual teams? And uh, did, so uh, regarding how you recommend it be carried out, um, did you cover everything you wanted to discuss about how do you, <clears throat> how do you recommend it be carried out? Well, that, that depends, of course, on the situation. There's no general recommendation for change facilitation. But what I'm saying is you have to look into the stakeholders and their relationships. That means um, rather than only have meetings which focus on what needs to be done, have meetings where people also talk about how it is done and how they relate to each other. That means um, much more collaborative meetings. I think the development of uh, agile management certainly points into the right direction. Um, but obviously, in order to have this kind of collaborative open meetings, we have to, again, establish that, that um, element of trust in organization, which means talking to people. And this, this is a leadership task, obviously. Leadership learning to talk to people and to understand what their purposes are, what's important to them, to understand what their concerns are, uh, what, what worries them, and to understand what, what are their boundaries. I mean, in which relationships are they are they, um, where do they have their limits, and start to have conversations that really matter, where people really start to develop trust and don't um, just, uh, don't just uh, pretend they were honest. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean, it's really about getting people to be ready to participate in open and honest conversations and talk of their mind. And I think uh, depending on the culture of the company or the culture you're working in, this is, this is quite a challenge, particularly if people very much adhere to authorities. So we're talking about a totally new leadership style which enables rather than controls and commands. So we're, what we're talking about is we need a lot of training and coaching and facilitation in supply chains. Thank you. My last question is, um, can you briefly discuss the upcoming event that you're involved with called the uh, Berlin Change Days? Sure, yeah. About six years ago, we started to organize an international conference in Berlin. We call it the Berlin Change Days. And it's a conference where people who are interested in exactly the topic I was talking about, um, change, participation, collaboration, leadership, come together and present uh, new approaches to change. So it's really a kind of a network meeting uh, and people show their new approaches, they show their tools and we try to organize a learning journey together. It's about 140 folks from around the world and it's happening every year the first weekend of November. And thanks again for sharing today your views on change management for supply chains. Thanks for having me. Pleasure.